and Gen 5 SSD is really worth it? It's a question I see a lot, so in this video we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the Is It Worth It series, we've been helping you make the right choice by showing you just how much you can expect to increase the performance of your system with a drop-in upgrade. In this video, our focus will be on super fast NVMe M.2 SSDs, with the current king of Gen 5 SSDs, the Crucial T705, taking on its slower Gen 4 cousin, the Crucial T500. In addition to showing you benchmarks across 11 games at three different resolutions and game settings, I am also going to demystify key SSD features to help you buy the right drive. And if you stay to the end, I will share with you some pro tips on how to avoid killing your GPU performance when installing an M.2 SSD, something every PC gamer should know. It's really not rocket science, so before we jump into the benchmarks, let's first discuss some of the key features of solid state drives. When you buy a new solid state drive or SSD, you're presented with a lot of different specifications that can be confusing to decipher. Specs like M.2, NVMe, SATA, PCIe all impact performance and should be understood before making a purchase. In this section, I plan to demystify SSDs by explaining what these terms mean, what the M.2 form factor is, what the differences are between PCIe and SATA, and how to maintain your new drive to enhance its lifespan. An M.2 SSD is a solid state drive that uses the M.2 form factor. It's designed to be faster and more compact than traditional hard drives, making it ideal for use in PCs where space is limited or speed is critical. To connect an M.2 SSD, your motherboard will need to have an M.2 slot or you'll need to buy an M.2 expansion card. One confusing thing about M.2 SSDs is that they come in different sizes, with the width fixed at 22 millimeters, but with the length varying to accommodate different applications, such as handhelds, laptops, or desktops. When you buy an SSD, you may see something like M.2 2280, which is simply a combination of its dimensions, 22 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters length. SATA and PCIe interfaces are the physical connections that transmit data from memory storage to the computer. The SATA interface was launched in 2003 and was originally designed for hard drives, but when SSDs came on the market, they adopted the same interface so users could easily upgrade their storage drives. PCIe is a much newer storage interface that features a smaller physical footprint, but the real advantage of PCIe over SATA is the ability to transmit data on up to four lanes simultaneously, where SATA only uses one. NVMe or Non-Volatile Memory Express is a communication protocol designed specifically to work with flash memory using the PCIe interface. Combining an NVMe SSD with a PCIe connection results in read and write speeds that are more than four times faster than a SATA interface SSD. NVMe complements the parallel structure of modern CPUs and allows for more commands to flow simultaneously. When comparing SATA to NVMe M.2 SSDs, it's important to understand the underlying technology and how it impacts performance. The SATA interface used by M.2 SATA SSDs can achieve speeds reaching around 550 to 600 megabytes per second for sequential read-write operations. While faster than hard drives, this speed is capped by the SATA interface bandwidth. On the other hand, M.2 NVMe SSDs leverage the PCIe interface, which offers significantly higher speeds. This performance gap becomes evident in demanding tasks such as gaming, content creation or professional workloads. NVMe SSDs excel in scenarios where speed is paramount, offering quicker load times, faster file transfers, and improved overall system responsiveness. Compatibility with your system is the most important factor to consider when choosing an SSD. It can be challenging to tell the difference between PCIe and SATA connections simply by looking at the slot on your motherboard, so it's best to consult your motherboard manual. For your primary drive, you should try to use the fastest option available to reduce boot times and load times. The benchmarks later in the video will help provide better insight into what option you should buy for gaming. The average lifespan of an NVMe SSD is typically around 10 years. However, there are a few steps that you should take to maximize it. The first is to ensure that your SSD has the latest firmware. Firmware can provide improvements to drive stability and performance, and a quick update can improve and or prevent future malfunctions. The second is to ensure that you cool your drive properly. This is especially important with Gen 5 SSDs that run faster and generate significantly more heat. Consistent overheating can lead to poor performance, data corruption, and eventually drive failure. The third and final step 
is to run a trim command weekly on your SSDs. While this may look similar to running a defragmentation command in Windows, performance losses from fragmentation on an SSD are negligible, and the act of defragmenting an SSD can actually reduce the lifespan of your SSD. Fortunately, Windows 10 and 11 detect that you're running an SSD and will change the defragment option to optimize, which will allow you to run a trim command. Hopefully, this will help you buy the right drive and keep it running efficiently over the life of your system. As mentioned earlier, our focus for this video is on super fast NVMe M.2 SSDs with the current king of Gen 5 SSDs, the Crucial T705, taking on its slower cousin, the Crucial T500, one of the fastest Gen 4 SSDs on the market today. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD based open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. For the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For RAM, we have G Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB DDR5 6000X CL30. For the GPU, we have a Sapphire Nitro Plus AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX VaporX. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. And for the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the 7900 XTX at default clocks, while the 7800X3D was left at default settings with Expo turned on. I selected these settings to avoid any issue with Silicon Lottery. I used an AM5 board and 7000 series CPU for my testing to ensure that I could run the Gen 5 drive at full bandwidth without impacting GPU performance. With the test system ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you do decide to purchase a newer Gen 5 M.2 NVMe SSD, you should be aware of how installing it may impact your GPU performance. First, if you want to extract the most out of it, you need to make sure that your motherboard supports Gen 5 M.2 SSDs. A Gen 5 M.2 NVMe SSD will work in a Gen 4 or Gen 3 slot, but if you install it in one of those slots, you will significantly limit its performance. Recent motherboards typically only have one or two M.2 slots that support Gen 5 drives, so it's important to check with your motherboard manual to identify those slots before installing. It. After you install your SSD, you should check and make sure that it's running at the rated speeds by using a program like Crystal Disk Mark. Make sure the correct drive is selected in the pull down menu at the top. Under settings, make sure NVMe SSD is selected. Click on all to run the test and check the results. If the sequential read and write speeds are close to those on the box, then you're good to go. The second important issue you need to be aware of is that on some motherboards, the Gen 5 PCIe slots share bandwidth with the GPU slots. This means that if you decide to install a Gen 5 SSD in one of those slots, it will force your GPU to run in X8 mode instead of X16. Now, this may only have a relatively small impact on average gaming FPS, say around 3%, but if you're trying to maximize performance, then this is something you should be aware of. The easiest way to check what mode your GPU is running in after installing an SSD is to use the free Tech Power Up GPU Z utility. Next to the bus interface, it will tell you the mode the GPU is currently running in. You can run a test by clicking on the question mark next to bus interface and then clicking on Start Render Test. If it says PCIe X16 4.0 at X8, 
8 4.0 during the test, then your card is running in X8 mode only. If it says PCIe X16 4.0 at X16 4.0, then your card is running in the full X16 mode and you should be good. Hopefully this will help you optimize the performance of your system. In this video, we tested the current king of SSDs, the Gen 5 Crucial T705 against its Gen 4 cousin to see if Gen 5 SSDs are really worth it. As you can see from the average gaming performance across 11 games, there was absolutely no meaningful difference between the two SSDs. The only game that showed a meaningful difference was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, but surprisingly, this game favored the Gen 4 drive over the Gen 5 drive. Now this doesn't really make much sense given the performance in Crystal Disk Mark, so I retested this game multiple times, but the results were the same. The Gen 5 drive does operate at a much higher temperature, but that's to be expected and had no impact on drive performance during the game. When you look at the results from the 3D Mark storage benchmark test, the extra speed for the T705 does provide a 25% improvement in load times, but for gaming, the extra speed will have no impact on your FPS. But the question remains, is a Gen 5 SSD really worth it? Based on performance alone, I would say no. But in order to answer this question properly, we really need to also look at cost. The T705 Gen 5 drive is almost double the price of the T500 drive at the time of filming this video, coming in at almost $300 versus the $150 price point for the T500. If you convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar, then it's clear that the T500 delivers much better value at all resolutions, with increases of around 90% when compared with the T705. You get lower wait times with the T705, but you pay a disproportionately higher price for no extra performance in games. So the answer to the question is a resounding no. Gen 5 SSDs are definitely not not worth it. For gamers, I would strongly recommend that you get a Gen 4 drive and use the cost savings somewhere else in your system. If you're running applications that benefit from the extra speed offered from Gen 5 drives, then the extra cost might be worth it. But for gaming, it's not. It's amazing how companies create FOMO around new products like Gen 5 drives, and yet there is no performance benefit offered. The much more sensible choice for gamers is a Gen 4 SSD. But who said PC enthusiasts and gamers like us are sensible? Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Is It Worth It Upgrade series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. Please also comment and offer suggestions on future upgrades that you would like me to look at. Bye for now.